One afternoon not long ago, an impressive ceremony took place at the Megapolis Zoo. All the dignified dignitaries were there for the dedication of a beautiful new clock. The mayor even made a speech. And so, as mayor of this great city, it gives me great pleasure to present this great clock to this great zoo. Yes, and I know that Stanley Livingston, keeper of the zoo, will take great care of it. Mr. Mayor, on behalf of the zoo, I want to thank you and the city for this magnificent timepiece. I shall guard it with my very life. Later that day, Chumley, who had not attended the dedication ceremony, was practicing his favorite sport and selected what he considered the perfect target. Chumley! Uh, I shot an arrow into the air. Chumley! Uh, <laughs> oh, gee, Tennessee, bullseye! Oh, beautiful, Chumley, beautiful. Do you know what you've done? You've just shot an arrow into Stanley's new clock. Give me that bow. Uh, gee, Tennessee, I really didn't know. Well, it's lucky for you Stanley Livingston wasn't around to see what you did. If he saw that arrow in his new clock and then saw this bow in... in... in my hands... Well, Tennessee, this time you've gone too far. But, Stanley, I didn't... Go. Go where? Go and get the arrow out of my clock. Now. But how can I reach it? How can I... Go. I will be out of the zoo for one hour. If that arrow is still in the clock when I return, I'll... I'll... I'll skin you alive. And so Tennessee and Chumley headed nervously for the clock tower to bring back the arrow. Hurry, Chumley. The first thing to do is to locate that arrow. Hmm. See what's behind that door. Oh. Chumley, stop hanging around out there. Have you got the arrow or haven't you? Oh. And stop ooing and ahhing. This is no time for sightseeing. Get back in here. Uh, gee, Tennessee, I couldn't reach the arrow. It's up by the roof. Well, we've got to get it. Hmm. Maybe that ladder. Up you go. Oops, yay! Oh, no. Now you've done it. You've broken the clock. And look at the time. The clock's supposed to strike right now. If the chimes don't ring, everybody will know that we've broken the clock. Strike the gong. Strike the gong. Uh, what with? What with? Anything. Anything you can get your hands on. Hey, wait! <laughs> That's really using the old bean, Chumley. But now, get to work. We've got less than an hour to fix this clock before Stanley Livingston gets back. Fearful of what Stanley Livingston would do to them if he found they had broken the clock, Tennessee and Chumley worked desperately until finally... All right, Chumley. I think we've got it now. Clock should be as good as new. All we have to do is to go outside and... Reset the hands. The ledge is too narrow? Don't be ridiculous, Chumley. There's plenty of room out there. Come on. My watch says ten after three. We'll set the little hand at three and the big hand at two. There. Good as new. Tennessee tuxedo will not fail. Tennessee, yeah. I know. You think it's time to see Mr. Whoopi. Well, you are right. We've only got 30 minutes left before Stanley Livingston gets back. So that's the problem, Mr. Whoopi. We've got to get that clock fixed before Stanley gets back to the zoo, or we've had it. Well, then, we'll have to make every minute count. <laughs> oh, yes. I can explain it best with the three-dimensional blackboard. Now, where did I put that 3D BB? Oh, yes, in the closet, I guess. Ah, oh, 
yes, here it is. The fantastic, fabulous, fancily flamboyant 3D BB. Now, a clock is a device for telling time. The first device for telling time was the sundial. A shadow pointed to the hour. But, of course, the sundial was absolutely useless on a cloudy day. Another early timepiece was the water clock. Water dripped from one container to another. And as the water level rose, a floating stick told how many hours had passed. That's pretty interesting, Mr. Whoopi, but I don't think Stanley Livingston would go for a water clock. We'd better start learning how to fix the big clock. Yes, well, oh, yes. The kind of clock you're talking about was invented about a thousand years ago. And the basic principle is the same today as it was then. Power to run the clock comes from a falling weight. The weight is attached to a cord which is wrapped around a drum. The drum was attached by a, a system of gears to the hands of the clock. Now, as the weight fell, it pulled the cord, which turned the drum, which turned the gears, which moved the hand, which told the time. However, in the early days of clocks, the weight would fall too fast, and the clocks didn't keep very good time. Then someone got the idea of fastening a pendulum to the clock. As the pendulum swings back and forth, it moves an arm which is connected to the teeth of the gears and alternately starts them and stops them so that the weight falls at just the right speed and the clock keeps good time. Uh, does my watch have weights and a pendulum too? Oh, oh, no, no, my boy. Your watch uses a spring instead of weights and a flywheel instead of a pendulum. Other clocks use electricity and even atomic power. But the clock in the zoo uses weights and a pendulum like this. Phineas J. Whoopi, you're the man of the hour. Thanks a million. Come on, Chumley. Rushing back to the zoo and climbing the long stairs in the tower, our two heroes set to work, sure that now they could fix the clock. Quick, Chumley, we've just got ten minutes left before Stanley gets back to the zoo. I'll check this weight. Chumley! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! And so, working diligently, putting to use all they had learned from Mr. Whoopi, Tennessee and Chumley finally managed to repair the giant clock. And just in the nick of time. We just made it, Chumley. Stanley Livingston is due back right this minute. Let's get out of here. Arrow. The arrow? We forgot the arrow. It's still in the clock. No, Chumley. I'll go up and get the arrow. Remember what happened when you tried it? You see, Chumley? Tennessee Tuxedo does not fail.